In this video, we are going to learn about foreign exchange reserves and foreign exchange market, how it works, who are the participants and how it affects import and export. We will also understand the reason behind China and United States trade war and many other interesting questions related to foreign exchange with respect to India. Stick around, this video is going to be interesting. Let's look at the definition first. Foreign exchange reserves. If we break the words, it means foreign currency which is held as reserve. By who? By the central bank of a country. In India, it is the Reserve Bank of India that holds the foreign exchange reserves. Now this foreign currency is usually in the form of US dollar. Because currently the US dollar is the dominating currency and also it is the primary reserve currency used by many countries for doing international trade. I know you must be having a question, how does a central bank get a hold of these large amounts of foreign currency as reserves? First I'll tell you how the foreign exchange market works, who are the major participants and then I'll tell you about foreign exchange reserves. Imagine you are an exporter. You have certain goods that you want to export to the United States. Your trading partner in the United States will pay you for your goods in dollar. Then what do you do? You take the dollars, which is basically a foreign currency. You take the foreign currency and you deposit in your local bank, which is a commercial bank, so that you exchange them for the local currency, because you need the local currency to pay your workers and suppliers. I hope you understood till here. The local bank, which is a commercial bank, will then go to the foreign exchange market for currency conversion. Foreign exchange market is a market where the currency of one country is traded for the currency of another country. But there is no physical marketplace. Don't think of it as some place where physically cash of one country is exchanged with another. It's not like that. There's a huge network of large commercial banks, investment banks, foreign exchange brokers and dealers who are spread across the globe and they are interconnected through telephones and computers. Basically all the transactions of currency conversion happens over telephones and computers and not by any physical mode. To simplify things, I'll make another illustration. We'll take two countries. Simple example of India and the United States. In the middle, we have the foreign exchange market. Now both the countries have commercial banks, investment banks, foreign exchange companies consisting of brokers and dealers. And then there is a central bank. In India, there is Reserve Bank of India. And the United States have the Federal Reserve System. I hope so far it's clear. Now at the base level, both the countries will have importers and exporters who do international business. Then individuals who are employees, students, tourists, basically doing money transfers, currency exchange while visiting foreign countries. Then we have the large multinational corporations that are engaged in foreign economic activities. So these all constitute base level players. Now all these base level players, they use the services of commercial banks, investment banks, foreign exchange companies because they don't have direct access to the foreign exchange market. So as a result, if you are an individual who's planning to make a visit to the United States or maybe just want to trade in foreign exchange to earn some profit or if you are a trader who is importing and exporting to the United States or if you are a large corporation who wants to protect your physical investment, whoever you are, you will be needing the American dollar if you want to do business with the United States. So in order to do that, you need to trade your Indian currency for dollar. You will then approach the sales desk of commercial banks, investment banks, foreign exchange companies and inquire about the exchange rate. Let's assume that you accept the exchange rate. Then the dollars are immediately given to you. Now these financial entities have an open short position and they have to find another customer whose order will match with this order. To find another customer, the financial entities will approach the foreign exchange market. Basically, it's an international trading platform that enable buyers and sellers to see real-time bids and offers for multiple currencies. That's how conversion transactions are carried out. All the financial entities' main goal is to make profit. So this is the entire setup. Now I'll tell you where the central bank of the country comes into the picture. India has a central bank in the form of Reserve Bank of India. The role of RBI is not trading or to make profits but rather facilitate government's monetary policies. Otherwise, these financial entities will keep looking out for profits and will do so much of currency conversion that it may then destabilize the economy. Imagine what if huge volumes of Indian currency is being traded for dollars 
and then all of a sudden the dollar value goes down. Just to keep a check on this, the central bank comes into the picture. So the main function of central bank are to control the money supply and exchange rate. It also controls the release of national currency notes. Then it also controls the commercial bank's lending and accepting activity. It also manages the country's debt. It also has to maintain gold and foreign currency reserves of the country. Then the central bank has to interact with other central banks of the world. So this is where the Reserve Bank of India comes into the picture and keeps aside some of the foreign currency as reserve so that it can be used as a buffer stock during challenging times. For example, if there is a food shortage or crisis, any country should have enough reserves to pay for 3 to 6 months of imports. Almost all countries in the world, regardless of the size of the economy, hold significant foreign exchange reserves. Now these reserves are not just banknotes. They also include bonds, treasury bills and other governmental securities. There is a reason why central bank hold foreign currency reserves. Actually there are quite a few reasons. But the most important reason behind holding foreign currency reserve is that countries use foreign currency reserves to keep the value of their domestic currency lower than the dollar. I'll explain what I mean. When I say countries use foreign currency reserves to keep the value of their domestic currency lower than the dollar, it has two follow-up questions. A. Why would a country do that? And B. How does a country keep its currency lower than the dollar? In other words, this process is also called as devaluating the currency. Let's first address the why part of this question. I'll take the example of India so that you understand it better. I'll take two cases. In case 1, 1 dollar is equal to 60 rupees. And in case 2, 1 dollar is equal to 70 rupees. Now think about it. Case 1 is a good scenario. Why? If you are a foreigner and if you want to buy Indian goods, then it will be cheaper, right? With this logic, India's exports will be relatively cheaper. Many countries would like to trade with India because goods are cheaper. Now this will boost trade and bring economic growth to India. So the conclusion is, devaluating the currency of a country makes perfect sense in order to increase exports. I hope you understood this. Now let's address the how part of this question. You must have recently seen in the news about the trade war between China and the United States where the Chinese were using currency devaluation as a strategy. So basically what the Chinese did was manipulation. Moments back I told you if the exporting country's currency is lower, then it's a good sign because the exporting country's trade will increase and it will boost the country's economic growth. Now I'll tell you what the Chinese did. They lowered the value of their currency, which is the Chinese Yuan, by printing lots of it. Because if you print your currency in excess, you can then use that new money to buy foreign currencies or other assets. I'll tell you how that happens. When a country prints more of its own currency, that increases the money supply in the domestic market. When people get hold of a lot of money, obviously businesses will thrive, consumption will increase. It's a simple demand and supply logic. If businesses grow, naturally supply will increase at a lower price. And this is what attracted the United States to import more Chinese goods. But there is also a side effect to increase in money supply. When people have more money in their hands, their consumption will increase. That means demand will go up. Now to meet the domestic demands, you have to rely on domestic production. Because the whole point behind lowering your own currency is to increase the exports, not the imports. Because if you plan on importing more goods, your currency is low, you'll have to pay a lot of money. Then obviously you will have to rely heavily on domestic production. But again, not every country can replicate this model because manipulating exchange rates can have a serious impact on global trade and also on the importing country's economy. So this is the manipulation strategy that the Chinese are using against the United States. I have also now briefly explained the entire trade war between the United States and China. As of 18th September 2018, 1 dollar is equal to 72 rupees. I need to address this question before we go forward. What does it mean when the rupee becomes stronger or weaker against some currency? Whenever you see in the news that rupee has become stronger or weaker or it has gained some points or lost, it simply means the value of rupee against the dollar has increased or decreased. If it says rupee appreciated or gained or became stronger, then it simply means 
one dollar is equal to 72 71 and 70 the rupee number actually goes down that means we have to spend less to buy a dollar similarly if it says rupee depreciated lost or became weak then one dollar is equal to 72 73 and 74 the rupee number actually goes up presently the value of indian rupee is higher than its set reference rate which means the currency is weak so a weak currency makes imports costlier because now we have to spend more to buy a dollar so we are at the losing end as it is india imports more than what it exports then there are some essential imports that cannot be cut down such as oil costlier oil means costlier vegetables and groceries since transportation cost also goes up so basically all import based industry and trade suffers now india cannot use the currency manipulation strategy to devalue rupee like how the chinese did because indian domestic production is not high to meet the domestic demands the currency manipulation strategy only works if a country is self-sufficient and does not rely on heavy imports. Plus, the Indian currency is supposed to be one of the stable currencies in the world. In 1966 and 1991, RBI and the government of India devalued the Indian currency. Since then, it never happened. So we are not in that business anymore. Because as soon as the rupee is devalued, the next immediate step is to artificially increase the money supply in the economy. And if the RBI and the government of India increases the money supply, it will lead to an increase in the amount of money that people and firms will hold and they will spend more, which will further increase demand. This will ruin the economy. So currency devaluation is not at all a good step. So the next question will be, what could be the final thing that the RBI or the government of India can do to make the rupee stronger? Well, RBI uses the monetary policy to keep the inflation rate low by increasing the interest rates. And the government can play around with the fiscal policy by increasing the tax rates on certain commodities and reduce government spending levels. Because always remember this, when interest rates are high, it decreases the money supply in the economy. When there is less money in the hands of people and firms, their expenditure will be low. That means their consumption will be low. On top of this, if the government increases tax rates on certain commodities, it will reduce the demand for imported goods. Oil is a good example. Why do you think the government is increasing the oil prices despite the fact that rupee is weak? Government is trying to reduce the demand of oil. Since oil is largely an imported good, so fiscal policy of the government will increase the tax and reduce the government spending and the monetary policy of RBI will increase the interest rate and keep the inflation low. Now higher interest rate tends to attract foreign investment. So that will naturally increase the demand as well as the value of the home country's currency. The moment Indian currency appreciates, a stronger rupee will make imports cheaper. But then there's also another problem. If the demand keeps reducing, that will hurt the banking sector and manufacturing output as well as employment because the economy runs on demand and supply. Demand should not suffer. You see, the government has a tough decision to take. On one hand, it can sit and watch the demand suffer. Unemployment will increase, production will go down, bank will be squeezed when interest rates are high. All of this can affect the government politically because elections are nearer. Or what the government can do is increase its spending to stimulate the economy to make up for the losses created due to high interest rates. I know everything looks so complex, right? Just go through it again and you will understand. That's why economics is a wonderful subject. It's a value neutral science. It gives you clarity and answers many big questions related to social and economic problems without getting into messy and pointless debates about values. I hope you found this video helpful in understanding some of the fundamentals of economics. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.